Welcome to the Leadership Lounge, a place to kick back and listen as our experts dissect some of the biggest questions leaders face today. I'm Emma Coombe, Leadership Advisor in our London office. Today, we're talking about how to develop your personal leadership brand. It's never been more important to get your personal brand right as a leader, but it isn't easy to concisely articulate what you want to be known for and what your unique value proposition is. So what is a personal leadership brand and how do you begin crafting it? How can you activate your leadership brand in the market? And what are some of the common mistakes leaders make when cultivating their personal leadership brand? Before we dive in, remember to share any burning questions you want our experts to answer by emailing redefiners at russellreynolds.com. We'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoy listening to our episodes, leave us a five-star review on Apple or Spotify. So let's dive into the topic. First up, we'd like to welcome Jenna Fisher, Leadership Advisor at Russell Reynolds Associates Paolo Alto Office and author of the book, To the Top, How Women in Corporate Leadership Are Rewriting the Rules for Success. Jenna, welcome to the Leadership Lounge. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Jenna, we know that a strong personal leadership brand can be a powerful differentiator, but leaders aren't spending enough time crafting their brand We found that 74% of CEOs said that they spend too little time on themselves. And no doubt this statistic applies to a broader cohort of leaders. How would you define a personal leadership brand? I think it was Jeff Bezos who said that your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. And everyone has a personal leadership brand, whether they know what it is or not. Uh, Certainly online, when somebody Googles your name that's your brand. Um, What they see on LinkedIn, that's your brand. And I think it's really important that you spend some time crafting and honing what your brand is. But I think it's super important that it is authentic to who you are. And Jenna, it's really interesting. Somebody actually said to me only today that 60% of who you are is what people say about you when you're not in the room. 20% is what you do, 20% is what you say about yourself, but 60% is exactly what you're saying when you're not in the room. And that can obviously be in the virtual world as much as in the real world. To talk further on this point and to uncover some of the benefits when a leader takes control of their leadership brand, we'd like to introduce Shun Lim, leadership advisor in Russell Reynolds Associates Singapore office, into the conversation. Shun, welcome to the Leadership Lounge. Thanks, I'm uh, really glad that uh, I could make it and I'm really glad to be here. So Shun, why do you think it's important for leaders to develop their personal brand? And what are some of the benefits when they get it right? When it is crafted well, your leadership brand can differentiate you in a crowded talent marketplace. It quickly helps you to build trust and credibility with stakeholders because it gives people a very quick sense of who you are and why you do what you do. To quote Koji Sato, the CEO of Toyota, uh, on this point, people do not buy what you do, they buy why you do it. I think that's a great point, Shun, and demonstrates the importance of knowing your purpose and effectively communicating it. So when we think of a strong personal leadership brand, it's like a well-crafted story. It has depth and resonates with the audience. But Shun, what exactly goes into creating this narrative? What are the key elements that make up a strong personal leadership brand? There are three key elements that make up a strong personal leadership brand. The first one is clarity. So being clear-headed about who you are, taking time to consider what is truly, really important to you, the legacy that you want to leave, um, what you want people to say about you. The second is congruency. The brand needs to be authentic to you. It should stand for who you are, your values, your passion, aspirations, and personal purpose. When it is authentic, you will more naturally act and behave in ways that are in alignment with your brand. Finally, um, the third one is consistency. This is a function of you showing up consistently across different challenges and contexts in alignment with your values and passions. That's exactly right, Sheen. And you can see these traits in many successful leaders today. Knowing your values in particular is key to not only starting to develop and hone your personal brand, but also to your long-term success. And Shun, our research found 95% of leaders said having a clear sense of their personal values was important in preparing them for their current leadership roles. When I think about a leader who really has, to your points, clarity, congruence and consistency, Richard Harpin comes to mind, who is the founder and chairman of HomeServe, 
an international home repairs and improvement business that he founded from nothing, a £10,000 investment, into a £4.1 billion revenue business in 2023. I feel Richard has developed an incredibly clear narrative across multiple platforms. He writes a column in the Sunday Times business section. He's a very active voice on LinkedIn, and he's the author of a book. And all of his communication, whether on LinkedIn, in his articles, or through other means, is really consistent about his desire to support growth, to support entrepreneurs, and to share the lessons that he's learned. I'd now like to welcome Amy Sissons into the conversation. Amy is Chief Marketing and Communications Officer at Russell Reynolds Associates and Executive Producer of Redefiners. She's based in our New York office. Amy, welcome to the Leadership Lounge. We're really excited for you to share your insights on this topic. Thank you. It's great to be here. Amy, we've spoken about how important it is for leaders to spend time defining their personal leadership brand. But when it comes to activating their brand in the market, what's your advice for leaders? Great question, Emma. When I'm meeting with C-suite leaders to talk about activating their brand, there's sort of three things I ask them to think about. First of all is, how are you engaging your community on a regular basis making sure that you're not only using your voice in the market, but also reacting, responding to things that are happening in the market. That's one. The second piece of this is really important is curating content on a regular basis when you're reading something that's particularly relevant or there's a new piece of research that comes into the market. You want to make sure that you're on front of that and you're sharing that with your community. And then the third piece around this where I think it gets really interesting is when C-suite leaders start to think about what is the content that I can create as an individual. And some people find that really overwhelming, but it doesn't need to be. With AI tools like Claude and ChatGPT, it's, it can become very easy to sort of create first versions of content and then you iterate on that over, over time. Wow, Amy, that's some quite bold uh, things that you've raised there. Absolutely fascinating. And um, if you feel that content writing isn't your strong suit and you're time strapped, I can see that some of these tools, if used correctly, could be really helpful. And actually, this podcast has really helped me to think about different topics and, and how and where to share my perspectives. But I'm also conscious that it's a journey. There's more I could be doing. I'm sure I could bring more of a personal angle into it, but it takes time. And obviously, you don't want to distract from the professional persona that's central to what you're typically doing on platforms like LinkedIn. Amy, on the point of activating your brand in the market, how much of what you share should be personal from your point of view? This is a a tricky question for many professional leaders in the marketplace, because oftentimes we anchor ourselves in our role or our function or what we're particularly known for. But where the brand really comes to life is where you have your uniqueness and you have a bit of your personality, your interests, and your overall purpose come through. One way to think about that is what are your personal passions? If you could donate 10 hours of your time every month to a nonprofit organization, what organization would that be? And how does that relate to your purpose? Uh, And once you start to weave that in with some of your professional expertise, it becomes very, very unique and ownable in terms of your brand. I think that's such an interesting way of framing it, Amy, for leaders who might be unsure of what to share besides who they are in their role or their function. It helps you to really think beyond your corporate persona, but make sure that it's all tied into some consistency around your values and your purpose. When I think about issues that align with my values, I've led charity partnerships with the Prince's Trust at Russell Reynolds Associates, and with a local secondary school, the Chelsea Academy. This has been able to really neatly leverage our skills around leadership advisors, developing careers. So doing things like mock interview practice, CV writing workshops is tied in really neatly. And um, it's not something that I've shared, to be honest. I think it's incredibly British uh, to kind of hide these things under a bushel. But actually, I will now reflect on whether that that could be helpful to share a bit more about who I am, what I believe in, and and also to represent Russell Reynolds Associates in an effective way in the market. I think Nike is an organisation that's great at not talking about their products, but actually the purpose behind it. It's really quite sophisticated. They tend to focus on the power of sport and how sport can enhance people's lives. And whilst they don't ever specifically talk about products, the brand resonance in the market, as we all know, is incredibly powerful. We'd now like to introduce another voice into the conversation. Rafa Martinez Gallardo, Leadership Advisor at Russell Reynolds Associates' Mexico office. 
Rafa, welcome to the Leadership Lounge. Thanks, Emma. It's uh, great, to, great to be here. So Rafa, we know that it can be easy to misstep when creating and communicating your personal leadership brand. Can you talk us through some of the pitfalls that you see? It's pretty easy to make a, a mistake in this space. The mistakes that I do see leaders commit often is maybe have a little bit too much polish, a little bit too much um, corporate in the content. Sometimes leaders tend to talk too much about the organization or their own personal achievements. And the, the other thing that I would suggest is to try to be less political or less ideological than you are in probably your real life. We all have hot takes on a lot of, us, a, a lot of stuff, but you really want to avoid alienating uh, a large portion of, of, of your audience in, in this respect. Absolutely, Rafa. And on this podcast, we've also previously had some really interesting discussions about when leaders should and should not weigh in on social issues. It's about finding the right balance, having a point of view on a topic but also being sensitive to the fact that some perspectives can be incredibly polarizing. Amy, I might bring you back in at this point. What's another common mistake you see leaders make? So for me, the number one mistake that leaders get trapped into is around the whole idea of curating and creating without actually thinking about the audience and engaging with audience. And it's really important when you have followership or when you have community where you're commenting on others' work, where you're celebrating others, where you're engaging in a dialogue or even a debate. A healthy debate is always, always fantastic for thinking about your voice in the market. And so what I encourage people to do is make sure that you're spending just as much time on curating and creating content as well as engaging with your audience. Amy, that's definitely something I could be doing more of uh, by not engaging with other leaders on LinkedIn and other platforms. As you say, you're not necessarily capitalizing on opportunities to expand your network, to be involved in important industry discussions, and to identify critical thought leadership that you could share with your followers. By breaking out of your echo chamber, you can foster a more dynamic and influential presence. But of course, time ends up being a very precious resource and, and balancing it uh, is not always that so easy. So we've covered some of the common mistakes that leaders make. We'd now like to turn our attention to aspiring leaders. Jenna, what advice would you give to emerging leaders who are starting to build their personal brand? I think earlier in one's career, there's a tendency to want to be well-rounded and to try to hone things that perhaps you're not as naturally good with. And that's great. But I also think what's really important is to do the self-reflection to figure out what is it that I am uniquely good at? What can I opine on to others? What can I be an expert at? And when you think about that in the context of what can I post on LinkedIn or talk to my clients about, it's really thinking about what are the things that I know so well that I am an expert around that I can be credible to others sharing. And Rafa, what advice would you give? I would say be intentional about how you build your brand. The first place and a great place to start is look at a leader that you really admire Analyze their online presence. Uh, what do they put out there? In what platforms, etc. If you Google one of the, 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 you know, one of these people that you admire, you're going to see a lot of depth and a lot of breadth in in the content. Uh, one thing that I, I did a couple of weeks ago is I, I asked a, a, a panel of aspiring board members to to Google themselves, and it was really surprising to them the the lack of depth and, and the lack of content that was around their names. Some people didn't even actually you know come up in the Google searches. So, so that's, it's not an, a, an end in itself, but it's a great thermometer to understand how you are going about curating your, your content. If, if you go back and start uh, creating interesting pieces of content in different platforms with different topics around a thematic line and, and you're consistent over time, that presence will start to, to become more robust. And you will find that in a couple of years, it, and it is a matter of time, unfortunately, you will find that your presence and your personal brand will start having heft and it'll start having profundity to it. I think that's great advice for our listeners, Rafa. What's key to remember is that crafting your brand requires consistent self-reflection and for you to invest time to align your content with your core values. And of course, this might shift and evolve over time in a really healthy way. In today's digital age, where your online presence is under constant scrutiny, a well-cultivated leadership brand can be an extremely powerful asset. So our time in the lounge today has come to an end. I'd like to thank all of our guests for sharing such invaluable insights. 
In 30 seconds, this is what we've learned. Your leadership brand exists whether you shape it or not. Take control of your narrative by clearly defining your values, passions, and the legacy you wish to leave behind. Authenticity is key to a powerful leadership brand. Align your public persona with your true self to build trust and credibility. Don't try to imitate anyone else. Don't just broadcast, interact. Your brand thrives on meaningful engagement with your community. Curate, create, and contribute to discussions to establish a dynamic presence. Your brand is a journey, not a destination. Continuously refine it through self-reflection, feedback, and intentional content creation. Remember, depth and consistency over time yield a robust presence. If you have any topics or burning questions you'd like us to cover in future episodes of Leadership Lounge, then get in touch. Email your questions to redefiners at russellreynolds.com. And if you've enjoyed listening to this episode, leave us a five-star review on Apple or Spotify. You can find us on LinkedIn and follow us on X at RRA on Leadership. You can also find us on Instagram at Redefiners Podcast. And you can now subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time, goodbye. Goodbye.